Cisco's WebEx One event. Um, Pat, you and I, uh, for a couple of days, you know, we work, we work across the spectrum with Teams, WebEx Teams, we work with Zoom, um, you know, obviously Poly, which reported earnings, had a decent growth quarter, by the way, just throwing that in there real quickly. Um, but, you know, what this event was really, in my eyes, all about was WebEx really touting its wares that, hey, we are here to compete. Oftentimes, when you listen to the broad media, main media, mainstream media, they're all about Zoom and Teams. That seems to be the comparison. But at the same time, WebEx has had massive growth. Um, you know, they've got their new devices. They've got a whole set of new features that they announced. And I wrote a whole piece, and you can you can click into this because I don't have time like we do with Intel to go through everything. But, you know, they're they're building on AI in a big way. They're enhancing their camera intelligence. They're you know, adding insights and analytics that help better understand user behavior. They're trying to basically create an asynchronous platform that can minimize meetings. And then, like I said, they came out with some great new hardware, the Desk Mini. You and I use the Desk Pro, call it the Bat Phone. Uh, they got a new whiteboard technology. You know, they're, they, they really across the board announced a whole bunch of things. And then of course, Pat, something we talked about with Poly at one time, they are really trying to work on the whole inclusivity and well-being, not, not necessarily in the standpoint of DEI and the overall, but the, the fact that in so many meetings, not everybody participates. And so every company right now seems to be raising the stakes and saying, we're gonna have hybrid work, people are gonna be everywhere. We need to use analytics, use technology, to make it possible that everyone that's taking the time to be in a meeting is adding value to that meeting. So it was a good couple of days. It was great to hear from WebEx. Overall, good event, lots of announcements, Pat. Um, but because we are kind of running to the end of the show, I think that's a great place. At least I'll leave it to you to kind of wrap some thoughts around WebEx One. And again, we, uh, we have in our show notes, Pat, we have a bunch of different tweets, articles, and thoughts that people who want to get more from us can get it. Yeah, so to be competitive uh, in in this space, you literally need to do monthly updates. You need to be pulling in your roadmap. Otherwise, you're going to be uncompetitive, particularly on the services side. So, you know, we've seen a, a just a plethora. I think there's been a thousand feature updates in the uh, in the past twelve months for the service itself. This was really more of a uh, a hardware launch, okay? And I know, you know. J j just like software is eating the world, but what is it going to run on? Services might be eating the world, but it has to run on something, particularly if you are a company who thinks you want to put the best experience together. You really do have to have hardware and software put together. We see it with Apple. We see it with Surface and Microsoft. Uh, Google is trying to go down that with Pixel. Uh, you know, the one-two punch is really what, what Cisco is doing. And I do think they have overall control of security as well, which I think is 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 key. Uh, the biggest device that they brought to the table, I thought, was uh, the web the WebEx Desk Mini. So imagine, you know, that this really is a I, I see it as a home solution. Could it be a a small group, uh, a small conference room? It, it absolutely could. But this is this is the announcement where. Uh, I think Cisco can claim it has a device for every room in the home and every type of room in, in the business. It's a huge investment. I mean, uh, the development cost of, of the mini and, uh, you know, I spent 10 years in hardware, um, uh, is, is just tens of millions of dollars. These are not small, uh, in investments. The interesting thing about the desk mini, it reminded me of, of the device that Facebook has that, Kind of follows you around and 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 looks at you, but I want to get my hands on it. I don't want to comment on on the on the experience. One of the things that uh, they also brought out uh, a BNO and um, uh, collaboration, uh, buying an Olufsen uh, 980 uh, headset. Now, again, I don't know how good it good it is for business communications, but but certainly for a choose your own device list. Uh, you know, people are going to glom onto this and executives who are complaining about maybe the pedestrian uh, headsets that they that they have. I can see, you know, the facilities or the IT people saying, hey, how about B&O? How does that work for you? It, it's so funny. Uh, my, my wife has two B&O headsets and it looks literally exactly uh, like that. Maybe a little bit bigger to go more around the ear, but uh, I can't say if it's going to sound good. I'll be honest with you. For business communications, I've been pretty underwhelmed with with consumer headsets, and BNO is a consumer play. But we'll see if if uh, if uh, Cisco was able to bring 
uh, some of the mojo. My final comment is on interoperability. Uh, all of these devices have a hundred percent interop. Well, not a hundred percent. I would say ninety-five percent interoperability uh, with uh, Google uh, uh, UC services, with the exception of end-to-end -end encryption, which is important because that's just not possible with Google uh, yet and and Cisco equipment. The one thing I need to research, Daniel, this is kind of a, a TBD, is meet. Uh, uh, sorry, Teams interoperability. Uh, you know, through certain uh, video standards, you know, you can claim interoperability with anything, right? As long as you've got uh, the right video standards. But the uh, question is, is can, can you truly have a collaboration uh, uh, interoperability?